In this episode, we catch up with Alan from Go Detail. Back in February when we first interviewed him, they were doing about $50,000 a month. That is a good profit margin. I could swim in that. But since then, he's made some breakthroughs that has allowed him to nearly double his business in just about six months. We've actually found all of our success from using Google My Business. And this is a must-have tool, I would say, for all detailers, because no one's been doing that. That's, That's pretty cool. new. Alan shares his breakthrough on how he scaled up to a seven-figure business at just 23 years old by using simple but game-changing hiring and marketing systems that you'll discover in this video. So let's go and dive in. Alan, it's good to be back with you. Good to see um, you, Paul. How's your day? It's been awesome. You're rocking it. We've been working. We'd love to get our audience an update on how your business has changed. But before we dive into that, tell those that haven't seen the first episode about how you got into Go Detail. Why did you have a background in detailing cars and so on? Sure. So I got into detailing my senior year of high school. I was 18 at the time, just looking for a summer job. And I came across a YouTube channel that was just kind of showing how to detail cars. So I picked up on a few things, you know, you got to know how to detail, a few marketing strategies, which all of them I've improved on mm -hmm. since back then. But now we're really trying to scale the company and just grow as big as we can and go national. Wow, you guys are thinking big, but you didn't have any previous experience at 19. You just started with the YouTube video. Exactly. And that yeah. came to be what it is today, right? Right. That's pretty cool. As far as the seasonality, how were your months over the last six months? Is yeah. it super high one month and, and, and why? What, why? Why do you think that would be? It's pretty consistent and we like to pivot depending on the month. So, you know, in the winter months when detailing slow, we sell more ceramic coatings, window tints, stuff like that. So we're able to stay busy all year round, believe it or not. Okay. Which is a really cool thing in this industry. You know, most people think it's a summer only business uh, and we've been able to make it last all year long. Awesome. Well, I am excited to show our audience your podcast and your office slash room and where, you know, the operations happen. So why don't we go and check that out? Awesome. Let's go there. All right. So this is where you actually run your whole business, Alan, from. Yes, sir. This is the Go Detail office. So right here, we've got like our work station, we've got four chairs, four employees usually down here, mm -hmm. including myself, uh, five days a week, just helps run the business. Zachary here. Say hi, Zach. Hey, Zach. What's up? Uh, he's our dispatcher. So he handles all the calls and scheduling appointments. And we also have our manager that's usually here. Nice. As well as an intern that just helps us with like day-to-day -day stuff. Got it. So much better here than outside during a heat wave. wave. And what is this thing for? So that's my mic. I use it for my program, just hopping on Zoom calls with people, mm -hmm. stuff like that, just to keep things official. Nice. Have you increased your marketing budget since we last spoke? If so, by how much? And what are the best marketing strategies that are giving you the best return? Yeah, so we haven't increased our marketing by much, probably only 500 bucks more. We're Where are you at now? Month. Total? Right now we're spending about $3,500 a month right. on advertisement, and that's print media, so like postcards and stuff, as well as Google ads, which have been really helpful. Is that the majority of your ad spend is on Google? If we had to divide it into thirds, we've gotcha. got print marketing, which has been working amazing. Business cards, just handing them out to all the shops we can. I'll actually get one real quick. Sure, let's check it out. So I ordered these through Vista Prints. Yeah, pretty straightforward. And I'll give you a little stack here so you can check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But so this, like, is this an actual, oh, this is a scratch for discount. This is That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's got, you know, this QR code on the back, our website, our phone number. Everyone's been loving these. We've been putting these into shops all around town. What do they love about them? What stands, is it the, the discount scratch off? I think it's the off? discount, yeah, scratch off, because no one's been doing that. That's, That's pretty, pretty new. Can people rip off and duplicate you? That's fine by me. How There's no it, competition. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. What's your number one piece of advice for having a great team and making sure people stay with you for the long haul? Better wages is always a must if you want to keep people around for a long time. Right now we're kind of in this you know weird state where we don't really know if we're going into a recession or whatnot, mm -hmm. but keeping higher wages definitely helps. And it's a tight market for labor too, right? Are you, are you seeing that? Uh, we are seeing that, but with our commission structure in place right now and all the benefits of working for our company, it's hard to resist, right? We're probably the best employer in terms of detailing in all of Oregon. That's awesome. And I've done my research, I've done my due diligence to be able to say that. So when employees 
come onto your team? What kind of training knowledge do you provide them so that they get better at what they do? Yeah, so typically if we're hiring someone that's new to detailing, we'll just have them shadow an actual detailer for a few weeks so they could pick it up. However, re most recently we've been really into hiring people with actual detailing experience, which means less training goes into it uh, and they're able to just start right away. You know, you get to make commission here, you're gonna make a lot more money, be a lot more happy, be the, your own boss at the end of the day. Tell me in detail that your commission structure, if you may, just in a nutshell. Yeah, so typically off one detailing job, our commission is 30%. So if we're doing like a $300 detail, they're getting roughly 100 bucks plus tips, which is really cool. You know, sometimes you'll get a $100 tip, sometimes a $50 tip, just depending on how well you can connect with the customer mm -hmm. and show your value. For mobile detailers specifically, it's strictly commission-based plus tips. I see, all right. And they, they're still able to pull anywhere between $1,500 to $2,500 a week or every two weeks, which is our pay period. Mm -hmm. uh, so it That's works out cool. for them pretty well in the end. Nice, well going back to knowledge, I wanna give you guys a quick uh, golden nugget. Every business owner and entrepreneur, like Alan was saying, needs to learn things and needs to have knowledge and our Upflip Hub is the place to go and do that. So check it out right now, upflip.com forward slash learn. Check it out. How has your business changed since last February at this point? What are the biggest changes uh, and, and value that you can add to our viewers? Sure, so since last the last video, we've gotten 1,500 enrollments into our program where I teach people of all ages, you know, teenagers, adults on how to scale and grow their detailing business. Oh wow, okay. And they've seen tremendous success with my program. That wasn't the case last time, so yeah. uh, I guess we'll talk more about that later, but what are the changes that you want to highlight since mm -hmm. almost six months ago? So last month, we had our biggest month. We did $75,000 in just one month, That's which pretty cool. before last month, I didn't really think was attainable. So 75 grand, that's no joke. Uh, how many people are you uh, currently employing right now? We currently have 18 hires. 18 hires, yeah. wow. So we got a big team. In terms of the 75K, can you break it down to us? What was the profit like? Yeah, so the profit margins, we always shoot for 60% and that's after material cost, after all the labor, which is our biggest cost because of all our, you know, how big our team is. Right. But we still are able to keep a significant portion of that 75K and put it towards expanding our business further mm -hmm. and reaching new clients in different states around this nation. Dude, we interview a lot of businesses, but 60% profits, that's, that's a pretty cool industry to be in. Yes, sir. So let's talk about the best marketing system that you can use to attract new customers and build brand awareness. Alan, what's your, what are you currently using and what do you think you need to change as you continue to scale up? So from my experience, you know, trying out Yelp, Facebook, Instagram, all those common things that detailers use, mm -hmm. I haven't had a lot of success. Really? And we've actually found all of our success from using Google My Business. Specifically, Google has brought us the most customers and we have the most reviews on that platform uh, and it's really attributed to our success over the past few months. The reason we've been able to scale so fast, grow our team, everything's thanks to Google. So what can you share that you're doing right on the Google platform then that's generated so much business for you? Just making sure it's SEO friendly. So I have a deep knowledge of websites and SEO and that's of course. what yeah. I used to do before detailing you know, for other companies. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of just applying all the knowledge I've accumulated to my own thing and reviews help a ton. Like I said, the back end stuff, like making sure you have quality pictures, making sure the pictures have geo coding, which I talk mm -hmm. about more in my program. Uh, stuff like that really separates us from our competition. And it's been able to grow us into the number one detail shop in all of Portland. If you type in car detail in Portland right mm -hmm. now, we are the number one result. Yeah, congrats. All right, well, this has been fun. I know there's other places we have to go. Uh, you've got a couple detailing sites, right, that you'll take us to. So stick around, you guys. Come with us and check out more details and how he runs his business. But before, show us your storage hub, where all the stuff is and kind of where employees come to get more supplies. Sure, let's go look at the hub. All right, I'll follow you, my friend. All right, so we've seen this before, Alan, right? Tell our audience, what is this place for those that haven't seen it before? 
Sure, so this is sort of our equipment hub. Our mobile detailers come here to restock their rigs, mm -hmm. you know, grab more chemicals off yep. the shelf right here. We got, got everything here. You know, the shine sprays, the bioenzymatics, everything that they might need for a detail job mm -hmm. is all easily accessible here. Nice. You know, we even got these uh, like floor mats we put in after each detail just to look real professional. And they're not know, branded to you yet. Not branded yet, but soon enough, we will have Go Detail on here. Nice. But anything you want to highlight that you've updated or added and why? More tools, essentially. So more yep. polishing supplies, more tape, you know, all the essentials you need for this job. You've got all the more films, lighting. which I haven't seen before. Are you doing a lot more of that than We started previous? doing tinting, but it's a pretty hard industry to get into. So if hmm. you're just starting out, I would suggest you put that on the back burner, but it is something eventually you might want to do. Yeah, so let's let's head out to the location. I'll drive with you if you don't mind. Sounds good. Let me just pack this up. Are we so, grabbing this thing right here? Yeah, just our A-frame. So right. we put these out for all of our jobs and they've been helping us get a lot of walkers and people just passing by. Nice, okay. Man, I'll take passenger. Come with us, you guys. We'll keep asking more questions and show you the actual detail spot. So see you there. Alan, so we're heading to an actual job site. What kind of car are they cleaning there now? I believe they're cleaning a Detailing. SUV Toyota. So we're going gotcha. to check out which make and model that is. But it's a pretty large size car. Should take them about three hours to clean. Right now we're just approaching the final touches, I believe. So we'll get to see what it looks like almost near completion. All right. Alan, what's one thing someone can do right now to grow their mobile detailing business? Honestly, there are many, many must-dos in this detailing business, and I lay out the exact blueprint on how to start and scale your detailing business in my coaching program below. It's based on practices that I've learned and perfected over time. So tell us more about that. What does the Go Detailing Coaching Program cover exactly? Man, what does it not cover? Just a brief rundown. We go over how to set up your marketing, all the ads, everything you need in place, the flyers, the business cards, all of that stuff. We go over how to train a team, make sure your management's set up so you could you know, automate the business, not have to work on it when you don't want to. And we also train you how to detail a car 40% faster than your competition. Dude, 40%? That's incredible. You guys, we're gonna have more information down below and for a limited time, Alan is giving our viewers, Upflip viewers, a whopping 25% off on a Go Detailing business coaching program. So make sure you click the link below and find out how to skyrocket your mobile detailing business. As you're working, you're gonna be helping out your team. What are you doing right now? I mean, what is this tank? Obviously it's not something you see at houses. Yeah, so this is a deionized water filter, which means it filters all the water that we get from the customer's mm -hmm. you know, hose or from their house. And it essentially just eliminates water spots at the end. So you don't oh, really have to worry about drying the car or working in the sun like we are right now. Mm -hmm. It'll come out streak free. That's pretty cool. Without any water spots, which is amazing. This is a must have tool, I would say, for all detailers. How much would it cost? This guy here is about 300 bucks and I will have a link down below. Okay, awesome. Appreciate that, Alan. For somebody looking to get into the detailing business, right? What can they do from the beginning to set themselves up for success, faster growth, and so forth? What are the key things that come to your mind? Yeah, so definitely hiring a team. That's probably the biggest one. Focusing on reviews, just getting all the traction you need online mm -hmm. is another big part of it. Because you could be the best detailer in the world, that nobody knows about you. But if nobody knows about you, you're not gonna get any customers. Right? I mean, word of mouth will spread, but that may take right. some time. That's gonna definitely <clears throat> take time. But if you wanna jumpstart your business, mm -hmm. you have to focus on all aspects of this. Marketing, building a team, doing quality work. It all go, goes hand in hand. And you started with what, 500 bucks, I remember, right? 500 bucks. So there's always a place to start. Yeah. That's the whole point. What are we doing? We're just washing this tundra, basically? We're just washing this. I just got a simple wash bucket. I'm going to throw in another wash mitt here. With an ionized clean. water bucket? Yeah, water. so this is super clean water. This is exactly what you want to be putting on this car in this hot weather. Yeah, no water spots. It's hot, you guys. So I'm going to grab uh, the solution we use. You guys have seen this minivan uh, in the previous episode. If you haven't seen this first one, make sure you check it out. 
I think you'll greatly benefit from uh, what Alan shared the first time. How many of these vans do you have now, Alan? Yeah, so right now we've got two of these rigs. Two, all right. And then we've got two guys using their own cars, but we're going to upgrade them pretty soon. We're working on getting more minivans for the team. Got it. And as you can see, they're very spacious. We're able to fit all the supplies we need for necessary for the job. For sure. The canopies, the A-frames, everything you might need on a job. Okay. Blitz time with Alan. Alan, if you had to go somewhere for, let's say, a month, you're not here, what happens to your business at that point? Sure, so my business is pretty automated in terms of just keeping the ball rolling when I'm not around. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all these things in place to make it automated, including our booking software, uh, the guys I hired to manage the business. It's all pretty straightforward, you know, it's day-to-day okay. -day activities. And if I left for a month, it would still be running, still be making the same money. Alan, what is the best part of being an entrepreneur for you? You know, being able to work when you want to, you know, sometimes I feel like working late at night. Sometimes I feel like working early in the morning. It just depends on the day. All right, worst part about being an entrepreneur? The hours. <laughs> I would say the worst part about being an entrepreneur is the hours. So I put, you know, entire, all basically all of my time into this business. Wow. It's my baby at this point, you know, I'm growing it as fast as it can grow, but it's a very fun process. Even though I might, you know, work 80 hours a week some weeks, mm -hmm. uh, it's still worth it to me because it makes me happy. True entrepreneur at heart right there. And last one, if you could change one thing about your business, or maybe yourself, let me throw that in, what would it be? If I could change one thing about myself, it would be to think even more big picture, you know, completely removing myself and just seeing it from a way bigger viewpoint than I'm currently seeing it, you know, working day in and day out. Yeah. Uh, even though I am still pretty out there, you know, just managing the business, I still want an even bigger view to see where it can go. Nice. And I think that's really important. Who was the first person you hired? So the first person we hired was just a what? detailing technician. So instead of me detailing all day, they would have been doing that job. Right. And then, I guess, besides the extra help for detailing, who was the other role that you filled? The second person we hired was the receptionist. So someone mm -hmm. to be able to take all the calls, help with the customer satisfaction side of things, calling back for reviews, all of that stuff I mentioned earlier. Right, and while you're still doing all the detailing yourself, right? Exactly. Right. So this is a pretty light clean. We get a lot of these cars that are you know, pretty <laughs> clean. They might just have some dust on them, but we I'm still gonna... go all the way and Make sure to complete it to perfect satisfaction. You know, this is kind of satisfying, especially being out in the sun. Yeah, so the process we worked out, we don't use foam cannons anymore. We don't use foam or soap. Really? We just use this O&R liquid, and it's really helped our business grow because not only can we wash cars faster, but it's also safer for the cars and the environment because it is an eco-friendly product. That is a big change, you guys, because, yeah, last time you were spraying foam like yeah. there's no tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> I'm still shocked that you went away from the foam, right? The, yeah. Because a lot of people use that, a lot of detailing companies, right? Yeah. So, so. Where, where, where did that change happen for you? Why? Is it a cost saving? Is it a service improvement? Because, I mean, I didn't see any soap on the car, <laughs> but it looks clean. So. Right. so we definitely got away from the foam mm. because we noticed it left a lot of water spots. It actually did you know, in my opinion, more harm than good, especially in direct sunlight. Like I see. So is, the direct sunlight is a big factor? The direct sunlight is a big factor. So that I would makes still, sense. you know, you could still use it in the winter and we might, but for now, this is our kind of solution for all and we can use it year round. So we'll basically go over the whole car with the rinse wow. and then we'll Please. go over it with a clay bar just to remove all any surface contaminants mm -hmm. and then finally just dry it off. Just feels like, the surface feels like you, you, you waxed it. Feels like glass. Yeah, that's incredible, you guys. So if you're not doing that or you didn't know about it, I hope that's a pretty good tip for you guys. Let's talk about systems that you use to actually book the jobs, uh, software, what it costs you, and how does that contribute to growth and revenue? Sure. So. House Call Pro is what we use currently. So essentially it's a CRM, it's a customer it. relationship okay. management tool. It helps us book all of our appointments. It helps us with scheduling, dispatching people to the right jobs at the right time. And of course, generating reviews as well as keeping track mm -hmm. of all of our customers, which is super important because you know you have to follow up with them. Right. You have to make sure they're still happy. 
which a lot of detailers don't do. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a big note for you guys. I'm actually working on my own app with developers to recreate it because there are a bunch of hiccups that I found in the software. Mm. So I've kind of gone out on my own, found developers, and we're building a better system now that has better booking, uh, better before and after pictures, all these things that you need to run the detailing business mm -hmm. that they are kind of lacking in. Interesting. No, it's good that you're seeing something that you can improve on. Is there a cost for you right now? What is it per month to use that software? So the cost right now, we're on their like, highest graded plan because we have so many guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's about $300 a month. And with my own software, once I do kickstart that, we're aiming for reselling it at about half the price. Alan, you started out as a solo operator, just you. When did you know was the right time to you know, build the team? As soon as I started getting like one job a day or two jobs a day, I kind of had the idea that I could automate it. Since all the leads were coming in, I could kind of take a more managerial approach to the business, mm -hmm. hire somebody on to essentially do all the detailing for me. And that way I could actually manage and focus on growing the company. And you've always wanted to scale. Was that, was that always the idea you to know, get to the national level that you're talking about now? Or is that, did that evolve as well over time? I think initially I didn't, I wasn't able to even think that big. You know, I was just focused on my next job. Mm -hmm. What happened was <laughs> after I, you know, my hunger continued. So I was doing two jobs a day, then I ended up doing four jobs a day, six jobs a day. Now we're doing closer to eight jobs a day. Wow. And definitely building the right team was a big focus of mine. You want to make sure they're reliable. They'll be there on time and just trying to hire the right employees from the start. Now, if the employee's not a right fit, don't expect them to change. Instead, find a substitute. Fire. Yeah, and fire. Rehire. I would say fire faster than you're hiring. Yeah, that's always the slogan I remember. Um, slow to hire, quick to fire. Besides actually finding the hires or the employees, what else would be the most difficult part about that transition from solo to team so I would say building the leadership skills is very essential to actually managing a team. Right. Because you can't just jump into it. You know, there's a lot of things you have to learn, how to manage expectations from people, uh, setting aside, you know, times that they're working, making sure it works with their schedule as well as your, as well as your company's schedule mm -hmm. and treating them like real people because they are, you know, right. it's not just all about employees and how fast you could make money. And it's not um, like you know how to run a team because you never had one, right? right? So then you learn on the go as well or did you go to some places to get that knowledge as well to get better as a team leader? I think experience is definitely one of the biggest factors. Right, biggest schools um, you'd say. <laughs> biggest schools, but Ooh. You know, I do go over it as well in the program. I teach you how to hire a team, how to manage a team, all the scripts and contracts necessary for hiring somebody on, onboarding them, all the legal paperwork you might need to use, nice. uh, which has been like a struggle of mine in the start because I had mm -hmm. none. All right. And That's now that we one. have this foundation, I could share it with people and help them grow their business. That's awesome. Guys, keep watching because we're going to dive more into detail as far as their, uh, their, their team structure and how everything operates. So stay tuned for that. Tell us what you've learned with the experience that you have already, the do's and don'ts of an effective customer communication experience. Over communication is key. I found mm -hmm. uh, customers would rather you give them too many updates than too few. I see. It's like, okay. hey, I'm on my way. Hey, I just started the job. Hey, I finished the job. Things that are, should be common sense, but aren't really common sense. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that really helped us grow this past few months. We've implemented a new foundational structure to our business as well. We've got all these contracts and scripts that we use every day to make sure that we're number one. Oh, wow. So you train your employees to say certain things in a certain way because we do that in real estate, you know, yeah. we call them scripts too, right? We learn it, but then we make it natural. Is that, is that what you do as well? Yeah, so we would have like generic scripts for, right. you know, ceramic coatings, for general detailing services. And, you know, of course you tweak those to every scenario. You're not mm -hmm. talking to a customer that has a truck. You're going to approach differently than someone that has a Prius. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that really makes the difference. That's awesome. What's the best way to encourage word of mouth advertising per se from customers? What's yeah. your experience? So customers expect the most from you. So definitely doing exceptional quality work right. will help you get you know more reviews. 
but also you know not expecting them to do it on their own mm. making sure you ask maybe once maybe twice maybe thrice uh, but mm. really trying to drill the hammer and you know make sure they actually leave a review because at the end of the day when people are searching for you online all they're looking for is reviews mm -hmm. let's be honest you know when right. I search up maid cleaning Same. or dry cleaning or restaurants anything. exactly I, I basically pick the one with the highest reviews and the best rated reviews and that's why we've had so much success here in Portland it's because we've got like over 300 reviews total right now cool. and we really put in the work to get those what's your process for asking for that can you break down the steps real quick maybe yeah, you've so, touched on it already but so essentially through our CRM the customer management tool we use they send an automated text message at the end of each job once we finish it which asks for a review and then we might follow up the next day call them say hey how did it go we'd love your feedback could you possibly share some feedback online and we would send them a link do you always do you make that call uh, one of our team members does make that call but it's like it, it happens absolutely for every client right that follow-up call for clients that don't leave a review that we notice then we would follow up with them the next day or something gotcha. like that to make ever, sure they do. Do you ever reward them or can reward them and say, hey, we'll give you a $20 certificate or a discount yeah. off, just leave a review? Because sometimes people, it's right. only three minutes to leave a review, but isn't, in real estate, I struggle with that too sometimes. It's like great clients, they still either forget. How do we change that? So incentive is definitely important and we've been able to find a way to do that. I go over it more in the program, but to essentially give you a gist, we give them $10 off uh, right before they pay we ask them, hey, could you leave a review? And if nice. they say yes, then we'll just trust their word for it, knock off that 10 bucks, and they're happy and we're happy. That's a win-win. What would you say you do better than some of your competitors? And I think you mentioned it earlier on, but what comes to mind? Maybe it's systems, maybe it's processes. I want to highlight kind of what sets you apart from competition. I think not having all your eggs in one basket is important. So, you know, as I mentioned, working with not only regular consumers, but also other businesses, and then doing the same, you know, really trying to spread out with your advertising and marketing as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people just focus on print, some people just focus on ads, some people just focus on organic reach. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to do all three, and that's what's really set us apart, I think, in the long run. That's a big one. You guys, make sure you keep watching, because we're gonna get more insights from Alan and Go Details marketing strategy that helped his business scale so quickly and has continued to do it so much. So keep watching. I'm curious, what other things make your business stand out in this very, very competitive industry? Yeah, so I think branding, just being able to differentiate your brand in some ways really important in such a competitive field. Mm -hmm. And you know, we could take a look at the yeah, uniforms show, show if you want. Show me what you've got so far. Because last time you didn't have uniforms officially, right? This is what Not I recall. Not officially, yeah. yeah. Last time it was just like a logo printed yeah. on a black shirt. But we've got more, you know, nuanced things now. We've got these detailing shirts. We got the detailing hats. So our logos match on both. G. Yeah, it says car detailing specialist you right here. It. On the back side, we got our website. Some cool logo right Go there. Detail watch. And everyone that is working on site is you know, needing to wear this, right? Yeah, so they show up on time, they look professional wearing a uniform, you know, it's not just any shirt they want, it's not just any sweatpants they want. Mm -hmm. uh, we really want to ingrain the brand into our customer's brain and just show them, hey, this is who we are, this is what we look like. Uh, you're gonna get exceptional quality work from us. So as a business owner who gets started with one employee too, what are the key systems and processes you have to have in place, Alan? before you start thinking about scaling further? What comes to mind? So definitely automating a few things would help, including the calls. That's a big one, right? Because if you're- most time consuming? I would say that's the biggest time consumer in the start is just being able to pick up all the calls while you're detailing. You know, I had to do it myself for four years and I was able wow. to do just fine. But another thing would be getting a nice CRM system getting a nice booking system mm -hmm. that would help you, you know, automate all the online appointments, stuff like that would really help you scale. That's awesome. And definitely need to have cute puppies in your office for some some entertainment, right? What's what's this guy's Rocco. Rocco. So awesome. He's only who doesn't love weeks to have old. dogs on an interview. <laughs> That's adorable. Well, I can have him run and we'll keep keep chatting. 
So you mentioned earlier on that you're thinking big. You want to go national, yes. right? Are you thinking franchising or just keeping it all under one roof for you for now? Franchising is in the realm of possibilities. Still need right. to figure that out. But for now, we've got Arizona, Texas, and Florida, Miami specifically, on yeah. our radar. And nice. we're hoping to expand there this year. So for somebody in the same position as you right now, right? Yes. Thinking to expand different business, maybe the same business. Let's talk about goal setting. Like yes. you as an owner, what do you do when you sit down at the table when it comes to goal setting? Goal setting has a lot to do with taking advantage of opportunities that come to you at certain times of the business. And you have to really recognize those and be able to pivot your business. Like most recently, we started doing more B2B work, you know, business to business. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, you don't want to think of your business as only limited to one clientele base. Interesting. There's a lot of clientele bases out there. You know, you could work with businesses, you could work with everyday residential consumers. Right. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the scaling part. So you're thinking Arizona, Florida, right? What are the steps that you're going to take to make that happen? So right now, our first step would just be to create a website in that vicinity, wherever we try to expand, mm -hmm. get it to rank, hire a team, and then just manage it and make it automated so that I don't have to use my personal time to right. be there all the time, right? Because that's the biggest thing that we as entrepreneurs have is our time. And that's our most valuable resource. We have to allocate that accordingly and make sure we're using the best use of our time. In terms of the platforms that we already mentioned a couple times, Facebook, print, and Google, how do you maximize the effectiveness of that out? I really want to understand and share that with our audience. Yeah. So I would say you definitely want to hire an expert. You don't want to try doing it yourself because you're going to mess up a lot in the start which will cost you a lot of money. So definitely, you know, hiring a special dedicated agency that specializes in specifically promoting detailing companies mm -hmm. would be the best thing for, that you can do. So print marketing, uh, is it dead for your industry? It's Newspapers and so on, or how effective is it? Because you've got some here for us. Yeah, so print marketing, I think, is a hit or miss depending on how you use it. We've been able to make it very effective. So we've got like our B2B flyers here. Uh, this one's for this our ceramic coatings that we sell to dealerships and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Nice. This is for our actual detailing services that we sell to Carvana, Toyota, and other dealerships. Mm -hmm. I can't share all the details here, but I do go into it, into our program. You know, you'll have access to all of the scripts, all of the files, very cool. everything you need to start this business from the ground up. And even if you've been doing this for, let's say, five years, and you're not happy where you're at, maybe you've, you're only doing 5,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, we'll help you set a new goal and reach it with you together. In terms of hiring new people, Alan, and finding great talent for the Go uh, Detail team, what's been the best place for you to find those people? We've recently had really good luck with hiring on Indeed. Really? Yeah, so they actually charge, I think, 14 bucks per application and you get to like choose whether you want to keep it or not and if you cancel it within I think 24 hours they don't charge you a penny there's no cost nice exactly so you just look through the resumes make sure you know you can see them working for your company and approve them as they come in what do you look for in applications when you know you're on the indeed platform I look for people to go above and beyond you know they need to submit a resume they need to contact us somehow. They need to want to do the job. It can't just be like they press a button, it submits into the automatic system or whatnot, and then we receive the lead. It doesn't work the best in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so just we're looking for them to go that extra step beyond to want to be on our team and actually be part of this growth. So walk us through the Go Detail management structure, right? The systems, the tools, and. How everything's set up for you today? It starts out with me on top. You know, I'm kind of in charge of all operations in terms of expansion, new ideas coming in. Mm -hmm. Then I've got my manager underneath me. Gunnar does an amazing job. He can run the business if I'm not present. And then under that, we have the receptionist. Okay. And then under the receptionist, we have our floor mobile detailers as well as our other remaining staff are all on the dealership. I see. All right. Yeah. So the, the majority of the staff is on that dealer that we interviewed you last time. Correct. Carolina. Roger that. As an entrepreneur, Alan, you've got so much things going on, so much things on your plate. And others watching probably understand that. How do they 
have the perfect work-life balance? What can you suggest? What are you learning so far? Just as an entrepreneur, kind of a general question. Yeah, so if you ever feel overwhelmed, you could just turn it into a nine to five. Essentially, you know, you clock in at nine, you clock out at five, and that way, the rest of the time, your head can relax. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I've definitely felt overwhelmed in the past, uh, where doing that really helped me personally. Don't forget <laughs> about real life, you right. know, have friends, get out there, <laughs> go go-karting, do something that's not related to work because if that's you're healthy. just doing this all day long, you're not gonna last long. So I'm putting in roughly about 40 hours a week now. I'm that's treating it more like a real job, nine to five, but that doesn't mean that I don't work some nights on the website, don't update this, don't update that, you know, being an entrepreneur. Yeah, your arm's always itching, right, to do something. Exactly. If you could go back in time right now and do something or this or that thing differently, what would it be? What can you think of now that you have a lot more knowledge under your belt? I definitely think I could have thought bigger in the start. You know, I never expected this business hmm. to get as big as it did. Yeah, it hasn't been that long though, too. It hasn't you're... been that long. And you had a $75,000 month revenue. That's and right. a lot of people on our channel, we, I, I read the comments, you guys, and, and you know, you're talking about, oh, revenue. Yes, we're, we always talk about revenue, but more importantly, we highlight in the videos, right? right. Profit margins. And you said that was what, 60% is what you shoot for? That is a good profit margin. I could swim in that. Yeah. So anywhere between 50 to 60%, uh, depending on the job, of course, you know, if it's an interior or just an exterior detail, we're making less money than, let's say, a full detail because right. there's more money involved, of course. But we shoot for 50 to 60%, and that's with the ad budget, with all the labor expenses, with all the material costs. Um, and I talk about this more in the program where, where to source cheaper products, mm -hmm. how to hire the right team, all that stuff will be included in that. In the coaching program that you have? Yeah. Awesome. Well, in conclusion, um, what, would you, what, what would be your advice to our viewers watching right now who are inspired? Just in conclusion, anything entrepreneurial, what comes to, to your heart at this point? Yeah. You definitely want to work hard in the beginning. Uh, it's going to take maybe a little bit of time to get things moving before you see results, you know, don't give up. Because mm -hmm. most people, they'll put in like a week or two and then they'll just say, oh, I didn't get any results, I'll yeah. just stop. Uh, that's actually when you should be pushing even harder. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say is just don't give up. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Alan. Well, that's a wrap with Alan, the owner of Go Detail. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take a second to make sure and check out the Go Detail coaching program because that will skyrocket your business. Again, thank you for watching. Take a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our videos.